This is the most successful scam show of all time. A hit in 45 countries around the world. The real hustlers have stolen cars. Hi. It's perfectly safe there. Burgled houses. Picked. Switched. And ditched. Antenna for the whole lot. They've carried out close to 500 scams and stolen over £1 million. And now they're back for an 11th series. Alex, Jess, and Paul, with new recruits, Polly and Jazz. Their job, to expose the tricks of the criminal's trade so that you don't get scammed. On tonight's show, guest hustler Shane Lynch is having a very bad hair day. It's not a bad idea. Jazz's prop bet is all in the balance. And Paul shows you why you should never play cards with some blokes in some bar. The next card I turn over is your card. Okay. The marks in this show have no idea they're being hustled. They agreed the footage could be shown so that you can avoid falling for the same scams. The hustlers have invited celebrity friends to see if they can cut it as con artists. But they'll have no clue what the scam is about and there are no dress rehearsals. So this is Sink or Swim. Today's guest hustler is actor, motorsport nut and boy's own hunk, Shane Lynch. I'm not a good guy for doing people out of money or anything of such, but that's why I'm here. I'm here to kind of learn a new side. My morals don't allow me to actually cheat people out of anything. If it's me dropping the bombshell on the person who's perhaps going to be devastated to losing something, then I'm going to feel terrible, absolutely terrible. Shane knows nothing about the role he'll be asked to play in today's scam. He's just been told to go to a local landmark and keep an eye out for a sexy swindler. Hello, you right, Shane? Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. How are you feeling? A little bit nervous. Oh, don't worry, we're going to take good care of you. <laughs> um, have you ever heard the expression, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me? Uh-huh. Yeah? Well, today, you're going to be helping us scam the same person, not once, but twice. Right. Now, you look gorgeous, but we do have a costume for you. I'm going to throw everything at you today. Let's have it. Today, we'll separate the boys from the men in Fool Me Once. It's lunchtime in a busy town centre and people are going about their business. These guys have just come from a bureau to change and that's why this guy is now the mark. Excuse me. Hello there, my name's Susie. Can I just ask, did you just exchange some money just now? You did. We're just doing an investigation. Can I ask you just to follow me, please? We just need to check your money for you. So there's some kind of undercover operation being carried out in the area. I think you're going to be able to help us. Thank you. Don't worry, you're not in any trouble. Don't worry about it. We're too... <laughs> it's a pretty weird request, but as it comes from a pretty lady, the mark does as he's asked and accompanies Jess. For any change, please. Sorry. Have a nice day. Ian, these gentlemen both. A little further up the road, they meet Jess's colleague, Alex. Green steel. Come with me, gentlemen. I just uh, a routine check. He's very confused, but still keen to help. He follows the investigators to their van. We've had reports of counterfeit money being passed to people, usually from exchange shops or other stores. We're trying to pinpoint where all this money is being leaked in. So all I need to do is just check that the money that you have is genuine. Hey, would you like to check the euros or the pounds? The pounds. OK, how much is that? 400. 400, OK. So Alex and Jess are investigating reports that local money shops are laundering cash by exchanging good currency for bad. 
Legit banknotes have watermarks to identify real cash from fake. These show up under UV light. Check this one. She said it's the first time that you've used after that shot. Alex checks if the cash is counterfeit, and he has good news. You're fine. Everything looks fine. So, but thank you for uh, letting us have thank a look. Thank you very much. Uh, cheers. The Mark's cash is all legit, so he's free to go. That beggar seems to be trailing the Mark. That's because it's Shane. A bit of an improvement, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is Shane's first big moment. He has to stop the guys dead in their tracks. Excuse me, gentlemen. My name is Alan Ladd. This is my colleague here. Hi there, here. operations manager. Daisy, you know. I'm pretty sure um, I just spoke these up there. Yeah? No, we need to have a word with you about them, actually. They're not actually who they say they are. Come with us right now, up, just literally up here. You're not in trouble, don't you worry. We just need to check everything good. that's happened. If you could just follow us up, my boss needs to have a quick word for yeah. you. The Mark's already been intercepted by two undercover investigators. Now he's being asked to cooperate all over again. Shane and Polly have their work cut out to convince him a second time. If he walks away now, the whole scam's over. No, no, calm down, you're not in trouble. You look fake to me, mate. No, listen, you're not in trouble. You look fake to me, pal. Sorry, this is my job. You're not in trouble, don't worry. We'll be two minutes just up here. We just need to make sure your money is OK. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Eventually, he agrees to go upstairs into a stakeout location being run by Paul and Jazz. You keep an eye, just let me know when they leave, yeah? It certainly looks like an official operation, but the Mark has clearly had enough of being ordered around. Your name is? Derek. Derek, how are you? Um, Hi, Jake, how are Well, do you know what's just happened? Uh, I don't know. Gentlemen, just examined your money, this guy here. This one here? So whatever money he's given you, if he swapped it, we're going to give you real cash back, all right? So you're covered. Paul's got some bad news about the cash Alex handled at the van. It's probably been swapped for fake notes. All right, how much did you give him? Under five All right, can I have a look at what he's given you back? No envelope, nothing like that, no? Yeah, very good. Well, as you can see, these are all fake. Nothing. So not only was Alex, the investigator at the van, fake, Nothing. he also swapped the Mark's cash for fake notes. There are clearly no watermarks visible under the UV light. OK, so you can see that's all fake. This is what a real bill should look like. All right, see that? Big difference, right? OK, unfortunately, it's under £500. Are you OK? No. Well, uh, have, have, a, have a seat then. Derek, have a seat. Right now, the Mark doesn't know who to believe. He just wants his money back. Did you suspect him? I suspect, of course I did. I suspect it. I suspect you was an off dragging off state. Well, I understand that. That's perfectly fine. Well, the good news is I'm going to give you cash to replace that. To help convince the Mark that Paul and his team are the real deal, he's going to refund the full amount in real cash. Do you mind passing that blue envelope over? Yeah, sure. um, boss, I just want to let you know I've got eyes on the two suspects. Now the van still here, and they've just popped in. Give us camp. a couple of minutes. Do me a favour before I give it to you. Please check it. I'll show you what you're looking for. Just looking for those stripes there. Yeah, that's it. Well, as far as I know, I'm be walking here. You might be the fake ones. This could be fake so money as well. Yeah. Fake well, ones, but let me. Maybe the genuine ones. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well. Having been stung once, the mark is suspicious. But Paul proves the money is real by showing him the UV watermarks. That's the cash from this. But here's the thing: the money the mark had with him at the beginning was real. The money he was given back was real, and the money that he's just been given by Paul is also real. What are the hustlers playing at? Well, as you can see, these are all fake. The trick here is in that UV lamp. Nothing at all, see that? There are actually two bulbs in the note checker. When Paul took the money from the mark, the UV bulb was off. Nothing, Nothing at all. Then he gave Polly a signal. This is what a real bill should look like. And she flicked the UV switch on, and that made the watermarks light up for all to see. Big difference, right? The Mark doesn't know it, but all the cash has been 100% real all the time. That's the cash from this. He's got all his money back, 
And now Paul's just about to make him an amazing offer. Are they still there? Yeah, the van's still there. They're actually still in the, in the cafe, so they've been there for a couple of minutes and probably having a coffee or something. So they'll probably be there for about five, ten. Um, did you get the sense that they were going to stay or go? I think they're hanging around for a while, myself. I've been there two, three hours. How much more cash do you have on you? Why? There's a £5,000 reward if we arrest them with more than £1,000. In return for helping Paul catch Alex and Jess red-handed, the Mark will get a whopping £5,000 fee. I don't know if they believe me, so yeah, there you go. Maybe if you poked me off the street first and gave me this, this small lab in the room about him just in there. I think you put it that way, that's what you should have done. Well, that's the problem. He's pretending well, to be us. You must have seen that last he approached me when I came the first Oh, we watched the whole thing. We got the whole thing on camera. Because we have to catch him in the act. We're hoping you've got more than a thousand pounds. That's the truth. Sensing that they're losing the mark, Shane steps in to convince him. I mean, I can assure you you've been very safe hands, by all means. He'll be with you the whole time. Nobody will leave you alone with him. I guarantee it. No, no buying it, mate. Are you oh, sure? Unsure who he can trust, the Mark refuses to help. Unless the hustlers can persuade him otherwise, this scam's going nowhere. When hustlers go out, they don't take money. They take prop bets. <laughs> The proposition bet has only one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins. Okay, I'm gonna try a proposition bet for you. What I need you to do is, I need you to hold this note from both ends like this, and I need you to balance the 10p piece on its side like that, on the top here, and you have to hold it for three seconds, yeah? For three seconds. For three seconds. So I'll give it to you to have a try. If you can do it, I'll get you whatever your favourite drink is. If you can't do it, you have to get me one, yeah? Yeah? Okay, I think I could win. So Jazz is offering a round of drinks to his new friends if they can balance a coin in the air for three seconds on the straight edge of a banknote. It's not a bad idea. Oh, it's definitely there yeah, for, yeah. for a third of a second, maybe. <laughs> close, very close. I feel like you could do better than that for nearly <laughs> a second. It's still good, it's better than most. <laughs> OK, so what you do is you fold it in half and make sure there's a really well-defined crease at the top here. Open it up on the table, balance the middle of the 10p, there we go. One, two, three. three. <laughs> Success. Jazz creases the banknote to create a kink in the edge, then places the very middle of the 10p over the kink and slowly straightens it out. That's got to be worth a free drink. Going to the pub with your mates is a time when you should be able to let your guard down. But not when the hustlers are in town. Especially when these boys are fooling around with a deck of cards. And there it is. <laughs> and Jess is on the lookout for some likely marks. These guys look promising. They take a seat in direct line of sight of Alex, Jazz and Paul. It's painful. And Jess seizes her opportunity. Sorry, excuse me. And moves in. You had the boys getting ID'd at the bar, weren't you? Was it you? <laughs> Straight away, their attention is drawn to the commotion in the corner. Looks like a lot of fun. Come on over. I'm not, I'm sorry. Come on, come on over, it's fun. Have you, it's, yeah, come on over. It's, um... Sure. Yeah, Susie. Come on, they need to go over. Invited to join in, Jess takes the marks over to the table so that everyone can get friendly. Can I just say, I'm not actually betting anything now. Posing as Jess's colleagues, they're all on a works night out. Do you play? Uh, what, what do you play? Uh, poker, blackjack. Uh, uh, These guys seem up for a gamble, and that makes them the marks. It's my lucky night. 
But Lady Luck won't be on their side in the smudge. Take a card out. Take a card out. Just take a card. Anyone. I want, look at it. Don't let me see it. Okay. To break the ice, Paul shows the guys a card trick. All right, put it on top of it. Okay. He's actually trying to find out if they're carrying cash and willing to put their money where their mouths are. I don't see very well anyway, but I'll do it yeah, by Yeah, don't yeah. Paul's trying to find the Mark's card. The so, next card yeah. I turn over is your card. Okay, this is fine. The Mark thinks he's missed it, as it's already on the table. And how much would you bet? No, the, I'll bet 20. Without even looking at it. I'm happy to match that. 20 quid. <laughs> Hold on, no, no, no. Match that. Match 20 quid. Yeah. Next card I turn over is your card. Yeah. Fair enough? Right, okay. Fair enough. If it is, happy I'll probably have that money. But if it isn't, I'll All right. take that, right? There you go. That's the next card I'll turn over. over. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> He's impressed. There you go. There you go. I'm there. He's fallen for a simple card trick. But more importantly, he's shown he's willing to play for money. And that's exactly what the hustlers are looking for. <laughs> do you want your money back? Enough, yeah. Yeah. Paul gives him another chance to win. All you got to do is find that. It's called find the lady. Find the right? lady. That's queen. So I've got to find it, yes. Uh, anybody, actually, we, you, yeah. you want to play? You haven't yeah. put any money down. Uh, <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, here's the idea. I'm going to mix these up like that. All you have to do is decide where the queen is. All right? Yeah, okay. and you get the queen. Paul's going to play the classic three-card Monty, also known as find the lady. Where would you say it was? I'd say it was there. How much you bet? How much you bet? It's over the far side. It's not. Don't Drive lose on. your money. I watched it, mate. Jazz's role here is to be a rubbish gambler. And he's oh, I, good. I saw it. You think it's there? That's not it. Where do you Just turn that one over. Turn that one over. Dude, what is wrong with you? Alex gets it right. Get, mate, do me a favour. Lend him your glasses. I'm putting money oh, yeah. down this time. All right, move them around. OK? OK, so you should know where it is. Any, anybody wants to bet? You want 20 quid? Where? There. On this one? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, no, I want this one. Don't try and check. No, uh, uh, uh. This one. I'm not sure. This you know. one. All right, uh, easy. And Alex gets it right again. The marks can see how easy it is to win. Yeah, you have a shot. I'm not playing. Have a shot. No. Just... Maybe the lady will be good at finding the lady. I never get it right. Just guess where it is. Oh, not for money, not for money. <gasps> no! ah! You should have put some money! The marks are watching with interest, but they're not getting their money out yet. The hustlers make it look easy, but the marks are right to be wary, because this is a game you can never win. You bet twice now. Whoa, 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 cards everywhere. Whoa. But Jess is just about to convince them that they simply can't lose. The distraction has been staged to let Jess mark the Queen with a dab of lipstick. She then makes sure one of the marks knows all about it. We'll pick them up. Oh, oh, don't worry about it. I'm fine. It may be a tiny smudge, but both marks can clearly see which card is marked. How much? Now knowing they're onto a sure thing, they go straight for their wallets. I'll let you both. You can both put your money together. Oh, but what's that? Is that is that a red one? Yeah, red one. I'll put forty down on that one there. Which one are you going on? You're going on that one. There's now around a hundred quid on the table. All their money is on the marked card. As long as you go in one, I'll take all the money together. Right, on that one. Which one? On that one. Yeah. That's all you got. Turn it over. But it's a disaster. That's not the Queen. I mean, that's, that's clubs there. Right? Uh, so They're stunned. <laughs> and Paul's cleaned them out. Well, look, I'll come back. We'll do it again. You've got any more money. Come on, get some more get, money. I'll get, get, get a chance my, to win. One by one, the hustlers leave the table. You know what? That's unbelievable. I was 100% sure. I'm, I'll be right back. I'm so sorry. The Marks try to work out what just happened to their beer money. Here's what they didn't see. Jess made sure the marks saw her marking the queen, making them think it was impossible to lose. I put 40 down on that one there. But by thinking they could hustle the hustlers, they were actually waving goodbye to all their cash. Okay, sorry, uh, you're good. No, no, Just before the crucial final hand, Alex distracted the marks and Paul switched all three cards for a duplicate set from his pocket. 
The only difference was that now the losing three of clubs had a lipstick smudge on the back. Once this guy turned it over, Alex marked the remaining cards to make them think the lipstick had accidentally smeared across all three, losing them all their money. I saw a night out uh, in Edinburgh, I sort of cut short of it after losing a bit of money in the bar. I feel gutted and feel like I've made a muggle, to be honest. The worst thing is we can't get a chance to win the money back. There's always a sense if you lose something, you get the chance to get back, but we don't put me off gambling for life. This scam is very convincing because the mark thinks he's getting one over on Paul. But if you can see the lipstick mark on the back of the card, you can be sure that everybody else can see it too. Three Card Monty is the granddaddy of crooked gambling games. There are hundreds of variations out there, but the result is always the same. Everyone loses. If you think you know the secret, remember that a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing, and it could cost you a fortune. Earlier today, Shane Lynch went from pop star to tramp. Excuse me, gentlemen. My name is Alan Ladd. He went undercover to persuade this Mark to follow him to a hidden stakeout location. There you are, so you need to come with us right now, up, just literally up here. You're not in trouble, don't yeah, worry. We just need to check everything good. that's happened. Paul then tried to persuade him to be part of a sting operation to catch fraudsters Alex and Jess. There's a £5,000 reward if we arrest them with more than £1,000. But unsure who to trust, this guy just wanted out. No, I'm not buying it, mate. Okay. Is this scam already all over in Fool Me Once, part two? Fraudsters Alex and Jess are waiting at their van. Inside the stakeout, Paul and Shane are still trying to talk the mark into taking part in the undercover sting. Sir, look at me. I'm telling you, there's a £5,000 reward. It's yours if you want it. That's what we do whenever we catch these guys. We've got to get it off the street, but we can only do it for a certain amount, or you'll not go to jail. Guaranteed you're in no danger. None. Guaranteed. Well, you know, he suspects something then because he's already seen you today. No, no, no. No, no, no. You're going to go. Well, here's what I want you to do. Just go up to him and say, look, I've taken out more money. Could you check it for me? Just look like you're a complete sucker. The minute he switches the money, we'll step in. OK? Derek, there's a £5,000 reward. OK? OK. No problem. You're a good man. Finally, he's been convinced. Will you buy me a drink? If I'm right. If I grand, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Thanks. All right. Can I see how much you've got? What I'll do is I'll put it in an envelope. Mm -hmm. Okay. The minute he opens the envelope, take him. All right. What do you have? The mark gets out the rest of the cash he's carrying. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. For evidence purposes, Paul marks the cash with a UV tagging spray so it can be identified later in court. Uh. All the marked money goes into an envelope. I'm also going to give you a microphone. Put that at the side. It wouldn't be a proper undercover sting without a wire. Uh, yes, there is one. Is, just put it in here. So drop this in here. I'll do it for you. Hold on to this for me. OK. Um, right, I think we better go. Stay close. Please stay close. And just do what he tells you. Let's go. Yeah, Quick. Don't get involved at any point when I go in for the arrest. Stand back, let me do what I have to do, okay? The instant... Stay safe, we stay safe, it's all good. The instant he opens the envelope, okay? Okay. All right, very important. Hurry up. The mark follows Shane down the steps oh, and out onto the street. Everything. Recording everything. So the mark is going to entrap Alex by letting him switch the rest of his cash for counterfeit notes. The whole thing is being recorded and undercover investigator Shane will be on hand to apprehend the fraudsters. He does what he's been told and takes over three grand of holiday cash to Alex and Jess. Yep. Oh yeah, I'm just going to spin it around. But Alex wants to turn the van around before he checks the cash. Uh, no, just come with us. He seems a bit twitchy. Maybe Shane hanging about is putting him off. Yeah. 
Alex isn't turning the van around. Instead, he's out of here. Still have the envelope. Don't, don't move, don't move, don't move. Shane legs after them, telling the mark to stay where he is. Not sure what to do, the mark stays put. Of course, Shane isn't really giving chase. He runs round the corner and jumps straight into the waiting van. It's coming back, Mark. The Mark isn't concerned about being left waiting in the street. After all, he's still holding the envelope full of his cash. Meanwhile, upstairs, it's not so much stakeout okay. everything. as get out. It looks like no one is coming back. Fearing the worst, the Mark opens his envelope. I haven't done that. It's a paper in It was very quick, and very deceiving. And I don't know how they put the paper in or how it was changed. Never seen it. Pile of receipts from £3,000. So how did the Mark end up with a handful of worthless paper? After marking the money, Paul put it in an envelope and sealed it. I'm also going to give you a microphone. Whilst being asked to wear a wire for the sting, the Mark didn't notice Paul switching the envelope with real money for an identical one full of newspaper sitting on the bookshelf. Uh, yes, there is one. Shane also let Paul know the Mark wasn't paying attention. And from that moment, the cash was as good as gone. The kind of hustles that go on in the real world, I think it's very, very easy to fall victim. As a, as a witness myself today and a participant myself today, I think I very easily would be one of those victims. A shadow. I, I could be a mark as much as everybody else could be, but I think without a doubt, you need to be aware of what's around you. This is a classic case of compliance. The Mark is dealing with people he thinks are officials, and although it goes against all his basic instincts, he has little choice but to do exactly as they say. Working in an undercover role takes real skill and professionalism. The police and security agencies are never going to come along to you as an amateur and ask you to get involved in an undercover sting operation. If something like that ever occurs, step back from it, ask for their ID, they won't be able to produce it and walk away. Yeah.